Hi everybody and welcome back to Sand Injunction. Little introduction, it's the first of three videos based upon or charting the progress and development of a small diorama that I've been creating here that it also incorporates a test track for me and Sand Injunction for the future. So I've been doing it, as I said, for, for the last couple of three months, but it's taken an awful lot of filming and therefore created a lot of footage. So I've had no choice but to make three videos of it. So this is the first one. Sit back and enjoy it. And I'll catch each and every one of you at the other end of it. All the best for now. Enjoy. Bye-bye. Okay, what I wanted to show you was this little box. Now, this is a very crude box. Um, what it was, was something very simple that I constructed mainly in the frame shop with um, older timber and put a top on and a couple of old bits of old track and the idea was to wire this up uh, to make it a almost like a test track when I buy a unchipped loco maybe from eBay or wherever I can put it on uh, the DCC Concepts Rolling Road and I can let it run away forwards and back and what have you and I also have one for DCC so the point with all that is that it looks good my friend actually did this for me on the front end he put a nice bit of channeling on and so I've got on off for DC and DCC and they're opposite so I don't get confused so that was very simple and it was all very very good and I got interested I put this to one side for a long time but then having recently discovered that I've taken my programming track off of my um, layout and therefore that system is now totally on its own and independent I also then needed to do a programming track I then put a plate in here to just hide some of the wiring and make it easier. I actually made a bit of a boo-boo, got to say, and completely mismeasured this, so it looks quite awful. And I'm not the world's best perfectionist. I do try very hard that when I do something, I do it to the best of my ability. This was so far under par that I can't, I'm not happy with it. So I decided now, because I'm doing a lot more weathering, and I will be putting out more weathering videos in the future, I decided that I would reconstruct this whole thing, take all this wiring out, and reuse it on another system. Uh, but in the short term, I wanted to make it scenic. So, when I do a weathered vehicle, whether it be a wagon, or whether it be a loco, diesel, whatever, it would be very nice to have gravel, uh, you know, uh, everything on here as it would have been, uh, and a little bit further beyond, a little bit wider, and then a little back area here. So I could put a little bit of scenics in, and so it becomes a mini diorama, which is great. And I also get this programming track, but then when I finish a, a wagon or something, I can actually then put it on here to photograph it for any videos or showing anybody. So that's what this little video is about. I'm going to take this apart and uh, build a new box, slightly longer. I'm going to be using full length 900mm track. I don't really need it that big. It does make it a little more problematical to move around and store, but I quite like to be able to run stuff up and down as well. Uh, a little bit more than this will allow me. And uh, yeah, we'll go from there. So that's what this one's about, and uh, we'll follow the progress during this video. Okay, so I've been working on this all afternoon, and this is the Mark I, which is stripped down, and it was very horribly treated by me, not very well at all, uh, despite all my friends' great efforts with regards to the electrics on the end. But I've stripped this one down and meet Mark II. 
Now the track is not laid yet, I've got to cork it. And the idea is that what I've done is I've <coughs> put my friend's system back on here, which is fantastic, and that will operate these as I wish them. And here we have the uh, plate for the 2 amp Pro Cab. And here I have just put on a Hornby controller to give me direction and feed to the DC side of this operation. So that's the electric side done. I will probably take these off and just tart these up and paint this fascia black at some point in the future. And now I'm going to cork this and here. And I'll probably put these on and uh, we'll go from there. So Okay, welcome back. Another day is done and uh, this is pretty much, well certainly from the point of view of this one is the DC, this one is DCC, i marked it on the end. What I'm thinking of doing is once I start to make the scenic and I will film the process and I think I might sort of put a little bank here onto the top of this and maybe a thinner piece but slightly higher and on the end here to give me a little bit of a backdrop painting it in a sky color just to raise it up a little bit more I think so let's just see if this all works there we go now let's just try the DCC working very fine. So now I've got a programming track and I've got test track for this and I've got a test track for new DCC uh, that's just come in. So that's all done and that's the nitty gritty bit done. But now I want to scenic this. I want to just go through the processes uh, of ballasting and putting grasses on all these little bits and pieces so I have a not so much a diorama just just a nice little backdrop to put locos on that when I finish lo weathering them and playing around or doing whatever I'm doing whether it's wagons or whether it's locos they can go on here and be photographed and I can then sell them on eBay or do what I want to do with them in the future so that's what this is about I'm going to carry on with this now first things up I'm going to be using uh, some of the concepts um, ballasting I bought bulk and the reason I bought bulk is because I had an idea that I would need a lot more than my very first layout and that's proven so and it was more economical but the colors that I bought are the sort of brown mix uh, which is very very fine from concepts I bought this a couple of years ago brown mix and the black mix because I was definitely doing the steam mirror I wanted to put some of this dark down and it worked out very very well for no name junctions so I see no reason why I can't continue to do the same idea for sanding junction so Time lapse it, see what you think, and uh, we'll move on from there. Welcome back everyone and uh, I've done the ballasting and it is dry. It looks a bit dark as though it's not but I assure you it is dry. What I've got is some polystyrene that has been pre-cut. I've pre-cut this to mimic the width of this and to the top of this and 
it's all been done with a hot wire cutter and the idea is that I will cut them uh, glue them in place now but then with a freeform cutter I will just cut round and make some shapes here as it sort of comes down and meets the ground here as to the glue I bought some uh, this is like a a wall um, version this is a ceiling wall for tiles called Overlit P now it's styropore which is the same as the uh, Yuhu pour. Uh, this does literally put this against itself. This will stick, um, excuse the pun, stick like glue. But it does. It does stick well. I try, I tested it today. This um, will not stick, it will stick to each other, but it's not a great grip this one is but I felt that this would be better where we have a different substrate here which is timber for this to go to and key to so I'm going to give that a go and uh, hopefully um, in a day or so I'll come back and we'll carry on with this what I want to do now is I'm going to use this tool which is a hot wire sculpting tool and I can sculpt out different shapes with this. And that's the idea. I don't want it straight edge. I want it all different shapes. So I'm going to proceed to do this now for a few minutes. And uh, yeah, see how we go. Okay, so that's done. There's a bit of a mess, but uh, two caveats to use in hot wire cutters. One, always use breathing. That's why I didn't narrate this while I was um, cutting, because this can give us some really nasty fumes by uh, literally melting the plastic. It's not a great idea not to, to use something like that when you're cutting. Secondly, you probably saw me during the course of this that every time I cut something, I would just take bits off and take odd pieces off here. I'm not actually cutting, I'm not actually um, touching a very hot wire. There is a little hand finger control here which turns it on and off to my requirements and it goes cold very quickly. So just uh, in case you think I've been a little bit daft by touching a hot wire, I was not. Uh, there is a little push button here. If it's not pushed down, it will not conduct and therefore this wire goes cold pretty quickly and is quite safe to use. So the idea is that this uh, is a free sculpting tool but in a way that you can bend this wire where you like and just drag out. Okay, so you join me back and I'm going to mix up some sculpture mold. Remember the name this time. And I hope this packet's still alright. I opened it. Um, when I was doing no name junction so providing the plaster content hasn't gone off it's been pretty much sealed so I don't see why it should have done and I'm not going to mix up too much of the time but I am going to mix up a fair bit now I know you can make your own that should be enough for the time being I'm going to get some water and when I do mix up the water with this I'm actually going to put some colour into it with some acrylic so join me in a minute I'm just going to go and get some water and we'll carry on okay we have sculpture mould and we have water 
I'm going to mix the two up. I think I don't want to make it too wet. Just enough to get it going. I want to add some colour to that. A bit of grey just to take it off of the pure brown. But there you go, we've got a nice browny earth coloured ready mixed sculptor mould to do the job. Some people I know can put PVA into it to give it a little bit more working time, I believe. Uh, I don't think I need to do that on this occasion. And I'm going to start applying it to this area here. Okay. Alright, let's just see how we get on. taking it right the way over to the back of this. Okay, I'm going to leave that for now, let that go off a little bit and we'll come back and have a little play. I'm just playing around with this. This is several hours old and as I say, some of it is hard and some of it is very pliable as you can see. But it's allowing me to gently play around with some of the shapes, some of the edges that got a little bit out of control and just blend them in a little bit more before we go to the next stage once this is dry and that will be to uh, apply some washes and some foliage Okay, so I've done a basic medium green static gla uh, grass flock from Woodland Scenics. Put the basin glue on and um, just kept going over it and keep hoovering up the little bits and putting them back in and just keep going. Okay, I'm going to leave that now for the rest of the night and let that um, dry up. We'll give it another hoover off when everything is dry. But uh, all I've got to do now is do the track and weather that in, which I will do once everything's set off. Bit of greenery and do the back scene. Okay, so I've hoovered off the uh, whole of the um, grass area here. And what I want to do is add a little bit more in terms of uh debris and earth colors before i go in and just do the uh, area on the track now this is a meadow grass mix of flock 
uh, and bits from Gauge Master, which is fine, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, but what I've also done is made my own earth tones from leaves. And all I did yesterday, or the day before yesterday, I think, is went out and collected a few leaves, gently cooked them in the oven on a low heat until they were crispy, uh, mashed them up, literally in my fingers, and then put them through a uh, coffee grinder, uh, one I have for the job of this sort of material. And from there I end up with something that's full of both of these and then I put them through fine sieves, different degrees of sieves, to give me two different grades. One is a very fine powder which acts as a very nice dirt, uh, which is different to obviously proprietary shop blends and is free. And this one is good litter that can go around bits of grass on bits of wasteland it's slightly, uh, as you can see, that the uh, quality of the grade is very different and this will go around as small leaves and bits and pieces around your tree roots. So there's two areas there. This stuff, I personally think that this is probably a little bit too coarse. Uh, if you're working in uh, O gauge you might get away with it, I think, possibly. But certainly in double O, where uh, some of these uh, would be measuring sort of six to ten inches or even over a foot long. Uh, obviously, they're way too big a pieces. So these will go back into a coffee grinder to see if I can reduce them any further. If not, they will be disposed of. But these, this is really what I've got. And out of uh, a little work, I've got a nice big jar full of both, and that will keep me going for some time. And Now's the time to get out there and source your materials. So I'm going to go and have a look at what I want to do on here and I'll film that and come back to you in a little while. Hi everybody and welcome back. I hope you got something from that. I'm so sorry that it's going to be in three parts. There was so much footage I really didn't have any choice but to do that. In fact parts two and three are still being worked on and edited uh, in the background and they will be put up very very shortly. I hope, I pray that nothing goes wrong with that editing. Anyway that enough said. If you've enjoyed this, then put your comments about and thoughts about it in the comments section below. You know the routine. I love to read them and interact with you guys. And also share the video with your friends. Uh, they may well be interested. Let other people know that of what I'm doing at Sounding Junction. And on that note, one final say, 
If you're not a subscriber and you really do enjoy the content that I put out there based on the build of Sandling, then please subscribe to the channel. It will be fantastic. It really helps me to know that people are enjoying what I do and makes the whole effort of filming and editing and putting it up on YouTube worthwhile because I know that people are appreciating that. So enough said of all that. I just want a final parting shot with you guys and girls. Um, I'm not sure when this is actually going to go on air, but if it is New Year, Happy New Year. If it's coming out for it, be safe, be happy, have fun. And I wish each and every one of you a happy, happy New Year. And thank you to all my subscribers since I've started Sandling who've come on board and are supporting the channel. And I do hope that many more of you who are not subscribers yet will consider subscribing to Sandling Junction in the New Year. All the best to you guys. Happy modeling. All the best for 2020. Take care. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching, everybody. If you've enjoyed this, please hit the like button and uh, add your comments. They'll be very welcome and always answered. And if you're not a subscriber, please hit that subscribe button now. And for your information, there's another video there and another video there. All the best. Thanks for watching. And I'll catch you all in the next video. Bye-bye for now. Bye.